Hi, so in this video what we'll be doing is going through the cooling curve which you'll have got in the previous practical and discussing what's happening on each part of it. So, what we should know is temperature is a measure Average kinetic energy. So if you've got a substance that's got a high temperature, the molecules within have got a high kinetic energy, they are moving about very fast, and vice versa, if you've got a low temperature, then the average kinetic energy of your molecules is lower and they are moving around slower. So in terms of how a substance actually cools down, the main two ways that we are going to be interested in for this are looking at conduction and radiation. So with our substance, what we've got up here, initially it was liquid. Here, where it plateaus out, we've got the liquid to solid transition. And after that, it's obviously turned into a solid. So you will have taken the tangent to the various points there. It should have worked out steeper up here. Pretty much flat there. Hopefully if you've got a perfect flat, very good. If not a very low tangent. And down here, obviously, um, a bit steeper than this flat part, but not as steep as the initial bit up here. So as I said, we'll be looking at conduction and radiation. So you'll have seen these two things on a GCSE physics course. So you should be fairly familiar with the two terms and you'll have done them with convection, I imagine. So up here, where we've got this steep drop. Now, there is a little bit of conduction actually occurring there because when we've got our hot substance and the molecules are moving around very fast, if an air molecule comes in and touches it to air fairly low, then our high kinetic energy molecules can collide with the air once they get to the surface and touch it, and the air molecule will obviously go off with a bit more kinetic energy, and our substance would have lost the kinetic energy, so it would begin to cool down, whereas the air around would warm up from it. Now, I say a little bit for this because air isn't particularly packed with molecules, especially not compared to a liquid or a solid. So there's not that many collisions actually taking place at this point, so hence not much is actually lost by conduction. Where most of the transfer would have been taking place is via radiation. Now the reason for this is we've got a large difference in temperature. Now we don't need to go through the equations, uh, Boltzmann, I think, if I remember right, um, and so forth with that. Just generally the idea, we've got a large difference in temperature. Where you've got that, then radiation is going to be your um, primary, in this case, source of energy transfer. So our liquid material is going to be losing it to the air around it and hence be cooling down. And as we see, it cools down fairly rapidly. Now, at this point here, where we've got what's called a plateau, so this just basically means flattening off, then the question is sort of why is it flattened off? We are still warmer than the air around, air up to room temperature, say 20, 25-ish. So our substance is still hotter. So why is it not cooling down at sort of the rate up here? Well, it is still losing energy to the environment. So the radiation and the conduction are both still occurring. 
So something must be counteracting that. Now, what's happening here? Bonds are forming. Now, bonds forming releases energy. And this energy released equals the energy lost, roughly, uh, as we can see there. It's obviously not perfectly flat, but generally, um, depending upon how well you've carried out practical, great equipment, etc., we should get a little bit of a perfect uh, flat plateau in there where we've got the liquid turning into a solid. But roughly, we'll say here then, um, so I'll just put in there. But roughly, the energy release should equal the energy lost. Now, for the final bit, so down here for the solid, again, we are still losing, so the substance is still cooling down. Why is it not as steep up here? Well, it is still losing fire radiation. But the temperature difference is now not as large. So hence the rate of cooling is a bit lower. So that's generally it for explaining your cooling curve. So in here we've got the freezing point, or if you look at it the other way, coming up the melting point of the substance, energy form, uh, energy release from the bonds forming cancels out that energy lost so the substance is basically trying to warm itself up at the rate that energy is being lost because of these bonds being formed depend on the substance what the bonds are could be hydrogen bonds dipole dipole things like that uh, depend upon the type of wax material that we've actually got working out the freezing point for thank you